More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, officially live, more heart than talent, mindset, Facebook Live. Welcome to the video this afternoon as I'm indoctrinating myself to welcome to the video So and to live here today. I'm so, welcome to live. So good to have you aboard here. For 21 years, this was a Tuesday night, 1030 Eastern Standard Call. So I'm adapting and adjusting to the new technology where every Tuesday – at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is More Heart Than Talent Facebook Live. Go ahead and let, let us know in the comment section where you are watching from, and this video will be out on Facebook immediately, or uh, it'll be replayed out on Facebook, but also the content is recorded and available on podcast. That's at goldenmastermind.com underneath podcast. I want to congratulate my team who have really put together a great back office for all of the podcasts over the years. So that is the GMS team. Thank you very much. We're going to move into the inspirational portion of today's call in just a moment. This Saturday, I'll be in Spartanburg, South Carolina with Bridget Bartley. Bridget is an exceptional woman. I had the privilege of doing a live interview with her yesterday on Facebook. She's a very, very skilled LinkedIn superstar, network marketing, multiple five-figure income earner, and a woman that I've had the privilege of coaching on and off over the last seven years. Next Saturday, I'll be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That is October 21st, and then I'll be back out in the field November 10th in Terrytown, New York. November 17th, I'll be in Orange County, California. That's where I'll be for the next month. If you're looking for one-on-one coaching, feel free to contact me on Facebook. I also offer free 20-minute coaching calls. It used to be 15, but I've stretched it to 20. It gives me a little more time to spend quality time with you. So if you'd like to receive that 20-minute call, send me a message on Facebook with your phone number, and I will return your, your request immediately. We will move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live. The topic for today's live is called releasing resistance and committing to the process. So resistance really means avoidance. On a daily basis, I've been coaching clients one-on-one. A large percent of my clients, whether they're in network marketing, direct sales, real estate, the mortgage industry, whether they're wrestling with an addiction, whatever it is they're doing, a large percent of the the population spends a great deal of time avoiding. And to release the resistance you have is to understand the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do. The first step that you really want to start to understand, and it's the understanding is awareness. As you become aware, as you're conscious, as you trust, as you know, then you'll be out of the guess. I don't know. Guess. I don't know. Guess. I don't know. It's very common for the Canadian, English, Australian populace in their communication style to use the words guess, I don't know, kinda, sorta, and this is how they talk to self and others. Inserting the word guess mid-sentence. Now, anytime you use guess in the sentence, I mean, that's, that's, that's a resistance because it means I don't know. When you do know, when I know, and that's a different responsibility. Your emotional state will create a different corresponding response 
when you're in conscious awareness versus anxiety, fear, and doubt. As I crisscrossed the United States in 2018 and 2019, I've devoted a lot of my time to assisting my clients and the people sitting in the seats to understand the difference between power and force, what conscious awareness means versus anxiety, fear, and doubt, so you can let go of the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do. If you don't understand why you do what you do, you'll live in denial, re -re recreating the same situation over and over to fulfill the same feeling that gives you a neurochemical high, meaning that you'll, you'll create a spike, you'll go up and then drop down, and that's what the body and brain become addicted to, is that high-low feeling. Now, as you, as, you, as you are aware and you are committed and you're committed to the change, you're committed to the process, you're committed to re receiving, you're committed to letting go, your energy changes, it gives off a different corresponding response. But to release your anxiety, your fear and your doubt, it's important that you understand why you do what you do. So let's look at the word resistance. Resistance is like this. Resistance is a force, not, the kind, not, not a positive force, it's a force counter force situation. It's approach and avoid. I have a good intention. I walk up to my desk, but I end up at the refrigerator. I'm, I have good plans for today, but they go awry because something gets in the way. Now, that's the difference between intending to do something and committing to it. Commitment is a follow-through, a follow-up, a completion, a task well done. And intention is, is, is a well-planned task that typically isn't, isn't finished. And when many people have, their, your resistance is going to be a direct reflection of your anxiety and stories about events from the past that you bring into the present, and then anxiety about future events that are related to the past that is unresolved. So when you have rejection, abandonment issues, when you have anger issues, you will bring those into the present to fulfill your feelings that keep you recreating the same situation over and over. How do I? It's a very common question. Well, how do I change? It's never how do I, it's I'm committed. As you commit to change, the process, now commitment is a one day at a time process. The commitment is a reflex. You're able to relax into the process. You're able to live in the solution. You're able to understand. You're able to, you're, you're not worried anymore. You're in the process of change. You're in the process of results. You're in the process of action. And it's a one day at a time process. It means you lean into it instead of leaning back. Resistance is where you get close and <gasps> now you've heard the old adage, what you resist persist. Okay, well that, there's merit to that. But what that really means is be clear on what you resist. The story that you tell yourself oftentimes becomes your personal reality, i.e. your personality. And when you are committed to this process, and you are, you are willing to step into it, you are committed to letting go, then you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. Resistance is a force. When you try and force yourself to do something, you're going to exhaust yourself before you ever get there because of the time you spend in your analytical, egoic mind processing, thinking, analyzing. And that's what many people do is they stay in control of being out of control of the control they control. Now, I'll explain that. It means that Many people spend a lot of time trying to figure out the future. And while they're figuring out the future, they start telling themselves a story about how the future is going to be. And then they try and control the future. By the time they ever really get around to addressing the situation, they're exhausted because of how much time they've spent controlling the control that has them out of control. And this is why people worry. They worry about the outcome. I was coaching a gentleman just recently who is rehabbing a house. And actually, in rehabbing the house, he also has other contractors, and he's so worried that they're not going to do it right, yet he's not, he's not rehabbing the house for himself. He's selling the house. I was pointing out to him, he's putting way too much energy, thought process, anxiety, fear and doubt about them making mistakes, about them getting in trouble. And this is what so many people do is they exhaust themselves, resisting letting go. As you begin to practice the art of letting go, the science of letting go, then you become the law of the few. Only a few people ever really practice letting go, separating feelings from the events that shape them. And as you begin to understand what letting go really means, then you'll lean, you'll lean into the results and the action that's required rather than resist it. When you resist, 
You keep putting off to the last minute. You wait to the last minute. You pray for a miracle. You hope something happens. You have to be able to embrace and address change. You move into it. You don't move away from it. See, the centrifugal energy required to break through is called power. When you resist, that is force. When you try to force yourself to do something you have a story about, that creates the resistance because your story is what creates the resistance. Your story is typically related to past events that you hold on to that are unresolved, hence the term unresolved issues. I spend a great deal of my coaching time assisting people to really understand what an unresolved issue is. It means it's an event or events that you either repress, forget about, hold on to, don't remember, and then you create you create a corresponding response in the emotions connected to the event, then you recreate similar events over and over to fulfill these same feelings. Hence term, that is an addiction. Creating the same thing over and over, expecting a different outcome to be disappointed. Now, as you have a better understanding, which means awareness, as you become aware, as you know, as you're no longer in doubt, fear and anxiety, your emotional, um, emotional etheric energy lifts your vibrational energy starts to raise. You start to, you start to transmute your energy from a higher level of emotion. And that emotion is called awareness. And it's that awareness that people are attracted to because they feel you. They feel, they feel the energy. They feel the love. They feel the spirituality. They feel the sexual energy you're transmuting. They feel your feelings. They, they feel what they feel where you're coming from means they identify with you. They find you interesting. That's what creates a brand. And as you move into this state, then you won't tell yourself statements like this. I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. Now, this is a very common statement that people use to resist being able to sit down at a computer screen on a keyboard and write content. Well, how, who am I to write? Who, what am I going to say? What if they say this? This is, this is the resistance that most people create. And in consciousness does not recognize hypothetical situations. Consciousness is not about what if. Consciousness is about knowing. Consciousness is about now. Consciousness is about awareness. Consciousness is understanding. And what many people do is they try to make sense. I don't understand. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Well, it, the, consciousness isn't making sense. Consciousness is understanding. There's a big difference between making sense in the analytical egoic mind versus understanding. The understanding that you require to understand is knowing. And when you know, then you don't know. And when you know, you don't doubt. And when you know that you know, then there's no separation between you and the outcome. You will create favorable results much more quickly, much more easily, and much more effortlessly because you don't spend so much time exhausting yourself. You don't spend so much time in emotional drama, chaos, overwhelmed state, you spend your time relaxing, which is relaxing, releasing, and producing, and very little time resisting. Because that which you resist is what creates the force that keeps you doing the same thing over and over. What you resist creates the emotion of guilt. And guilt is what takes you down to one of the lowest levels of energy, guilt and shame, right above apathy, because you have a good intention, poor delivery, then you feel disappointed, which takes you right around the energy of guilt, right around 25, 50, 100 cycles a second, a very, very low calibration of energy, and you'll attract your reality other like-minded resistors. And if you have a team of resistors, it's going to be a direct reflection. Some of it of you, most of it about society, a large percent of society resist. But if you have a team of resistors and not a team of persisters, then there's a high probability that you're a chronic resistor yourself. Now, in any kind of culture, your objective would be able to attract your reality, one or two people of like mind coming together in an annual basis for a common cause that would be results, production, cause, meaning, and purpose. As you attract your reality, these type of people more readily, more often, and more frequently, then your results will begin to change systematically over a short or long period of time. And this is also imperative that you be and stay patient. Success, transformation, recovery is not instant gratification. Although you can create instant gratification through your result, but it's a consistent long-term effort one day at a time over a long career and over a long life. That's why your health is so important is that you create 
healthy feelings and healthy boundaries and you start to live in the flow of life, not the resistance of life. If you're standing behind the glass saying, I should be there, but I'm here, I can't believe I'm here, I should be there, that's because you resist. And you resist mastering your emotions. You resist letting go. You resist learning the skills, habits, and mindset to be an exceptional, successful entrepreneur, business owner, man or woman of influence and affluence. So avoidance and procrastination plays a huge role in, in, resi in resistance. Procrastination means, procrastination means procrastinari in Latin. It means to avoid. And that's typically what procrastination means. It means you approach and avoid. You approach and avoid. You approach and avoid. Now, why do you do this? Some of those common reasons that the, the average person, whoever average is, the, some of the most common reasons that average people avoid is to control the outcome. Now by controlling the outcome, what does that mean when you're avoiding? How do you control the outcome? Well, first of all, you do not fail. Second, you do not succeed. Third, you control the outcome by being disappointed, by telling yourself a series of stories. Because what you're doing by avoiding is predictable. You create the same situation over and over to fulfill the same set of feelings. Now your avoidance tendencies are a direct reflection of unresolved issues, events you hold on to, and stories you tell yourself. Now, the objective is to be able to succeed. The objective is to live a good life. The objective is to be able to recover. But the minute you say, well, that will be hard, that will be difficult, it's gonna be a long, hard journey for me. This is how most people create their resistance by their word choices. The way you communicate self will dictate your action or your inaction. And if you find yourself in inaction, that means you're watching in the sidelines, you're getting ready to get ready, you're going to events, rallies, conventions, seminars, workshops, listening to downloads, podcasts, reading books, audio books, that's good, that's awesome, because that's a component of it. But if you're doing that without the action, then that's a wish. You're just wishing that one day, mythically, magically, the situation is going to change and the success fairy comes down and goes, boop, you're successful, well, that won't happen. I encounter many people who say, I'm going to replace my income. Oh, great. That's awesome. I'm impressed that you make that statement. But it, the impression you leave on your unconscious and the impression that you leave on your conscious when you're telling yourself in denial is that you'll just keep avoiding. And it's what many people do. They have a good intention and a poor delivery. Your delivery is the action one day at a time. So for you to let go of resistance is for you to commit to the process. You do this by taking longer breaths in a long breath cycle. Rather than a short breath cycle where you barely breathe. A longer breath cycle. You monitor your word choices. You actually listen and hear what comes out of your mouth. And you hear it consistently. And then you... Adapt and adjust. You start to adapt and adjust your sentence structure, your sentence style, your self-talk, the way you communicate. You start to speak into existence, a different set of affirmations. Now, I've had people say, if I do affirmations, will I succeed? Not necessarily. But if you read affirmations, it will enhance the law of averages of your subconscious will start to believe some of what you're saying. It might not believe all of it, but at least you're reprogramming the unconscious so that you can be conscious. So it's the unconscious that holds on to the events. The unconscious is what represses the events. It's the unconscious that then colludes with the analytical egoic brain that says, I don't know why I do this. I had a good childhood. This shouldn't be happening to me. This is what many people do. Is they, they don't, they're not clear on why they do what they do. Then they perpetuate the same set of feelings, recreating the same events, resisting, letting go, succeeding, recovering, elevating their esteem, moving into a higher consciousness. Because all of that represents the unknown. And the, it's the unknown, it's what's out there, that so many people have anxiety while they're sitting here. So if, if, you, if, you're, if you're connecting with this content today, the breakthrough factor for you would be to move out of denial and move into recovery. Recovery is honesty. It means you know. And you know why you do what you do. And you let go of the story. And there's no more yeah buts in your sentence structure. Yeah but, it became difficult. Yeah but, what if I'm rejected? Yeah but, what if I'm abandoned? Yeah but, what if I make a mistake? Yeah but, what if I offend someone? Yeah but, what if I, what if I get in trouble? Yeah but, what if someone doesn't like me? Yeah but, what if I get criticized? I mean, there's a whole series of yeah buts that most people use. This sounds good, but 
but is a preposition that sets up the objection. And this is where you, you know, when you do it to yourself, it makes it challenging for you to pick up when others go, this sounds really good, but I don't have that kind of money. Well, that's typically not about the money. That resistance right there is about the commitment. That's about the decision. Many people use money as an excuse, knowing they can find it, but living in resistance because finding the money would contradict where they are. And letting go is your ability, my ability, to separate my feelings from the events that shape them. Now, the power of change, this is step four in today's More Heart Than Talent Facebook Live, the power of change. How do I? How do I change? How do I change? How do I change? I want to change. I'd like to change. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try. Well, it's, those are weak words, so it's disempowering language. I am committed to the process of change. change. Change can be subtle. Change can be big. It just depends on where it is, but more than likely, change will be an evolution. You can, you can also change how you've been changing. Change comes from awareness. Change comes from a mistake you make and not criticizing yourself and being able to look at the mistake you made with objectivity, with honesty, and then adapting and adjusting. And when necessary, apologizing for the mistake, the transgression, or whatever it is you did, and you move into a higher level of integrity, that's a place called honesty. That's what change would mean. Change would mean you commit to simple, subtle changes daily, not these big pie in the sky changes. Not you're gonna make $50,000 a month, but you haven't enrolled anyone in your, in your business in a year. Many people have these big goals and very, very small habits. It's your habits when it comes to change that will determine whether you're in recovery or whether you're in a chronic relapse. And if you're in a chronic relapse, that means that daily, you're your body will run your brain and you're consistently relapsing back into a set of motion, emotions that keep you being and doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different outcome. When, when you are here, when you are now, when you understand, when you are aware, then change becomes a, a different window. You see change from a different perspective. Change becomes liberating. But for most people, change is difficult, hence the resistance. So when you speak hard, difficult, long, arduous, and you project how, the, how, how it's going to be so challenging out there, it makes it very challenging for you to change today because you put so much energy into how overwhelming it's going to be that now you have an excuse to relapse. And when you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events, now you can separate your feelings from events and move into awareness. Awareness is knowing. I know I can change. I'm committed to change. I am changing. As simple as making your bed every single day. As simple as wiping down the sink, the counters. As simple as organizing your desk for the first time. As simple as letting go of, I know where everything is, it's a mess, but I know where everything is. When you start to change your behavior, you change your association with the past. Because your behaviors are conditional based on events that shape the feelings. And the feelings are what create the emotions, and the emotions are what create your anxieties. Emotions also can create your awareness. When you're in love, joy, bliss, prosperity, and your feelings are feeling empowered or you're in power or your esteem, you're in your own esteem, you feel good about self, that's a different emotional state. That's uplifting. And when you walk in the room and that type of energy, people feel you differently than when you're like this, when you're worried all the time. And if you're worried all the time, that, that's how many people, that's all resistance talk. When you're worried all the time, it means you're so anxious about events that haven't happened that you're typically you're paralyzed. And whenever you're in, when your body's in that fight or flight state, it gives off a corresponding response that says, reject me, abandon me, put me in a position that I'm wrong, go ahead and violate me, or any multitude of situations that will fulfill your emotions to keep you being and doing the same thing over and over. Taking responsibility. So the ability to respond. Even in taking, we don't take responsibility. We are responsible. I am a responsible human being, meaning I have the ability to respond, i.e. adapt and adjust. I can adapt and adjust easily and effortlessly. I am here. I am now. I am in the flow. And you're in that state of awareness, that state of consciousness, now you're a different set of energy. You're in awareness. And in that type of energy, once again, you know. When you're communicating with someone, you'll be able to know whether they're the right person or not. 
And you can do this without any judgment because you know. Knowing isn't judgment. Knowing is knowing. What if, though? What if, what if that was a good person? Well, there is no what if in consciousness. Because there, because if you go into what if, then that's not conscious. That's doubt. But if you keep what ifing, that's doubt. That's resistance. But when you know, then there's there's no doubt. But then you, you don't you don't exhaust yourself what ifing. And as you move into the state of awareness, it's not something that you bottle up. You don't put. It's not magic. It's not mythical. It's awareness. It's a knowing state. It's not that difficult to be that person one day at a time. How and you and the many people say you have no idea. I do have an idea because I've been there before. But I'm a byproduct of my own change. I've been clean and sober 30 years. I was an addict for 14 years. So if anyone understands, it would definitely be me. I would spend a lot of my days being so in control of being out of control, controlling the control that I was out of control of that I'd relapse on command. I taught myself over a long period of time, one day at a time, how to be and stay present. I anchored myself daily in a new set of beliefs. It wasn't overnight, but I started to change. I started to address my cynicism. I started to address my anger. I started to address, yeah, but what if? I eventually let go of being right and not being so anxious and not being so intense. And my energy began to change. As this began to change, who and what? Who and what shows up is different. Now, this can be simple and subtle, or it can be that one year that you've been waiting for, but it will not happen as long as you're resisting. You will not succeed in resistance. You will not recover in resistance. You'll recover one day at a time because you're committed. You'll succeed because you're, you're, because you're committed, and you'll do that one day at a time because you change a new habit. And as you begin to move into success habits, emotional habits, and recovery habits, they all come together from a neurological network of neurons that wire and fire in your right brain that says, I am enough. And it's in that enough energy that you begin to transmute the feelings that people start to sense, they start to feel, and they see your posts, they read your content, they see your ads, and they start to join you. They start to trickle in. And you start to look for the signs and the clues in the journey because you're no longer in resistance and you're in the flow. That is prosperity. And there's persistence, but persistence must also start to be rewarded eventually because you can be persistent in force. But your persistence, you want it to be in a relaxed body. That's a commitment. That's a very, it's, it's like you're producing in a very relaxed body. Now, learning to commit, now that's number six. So commitment is not, commitment is a learned behavior and it's practiced one day at a time. Commitment requires you to move out of doubt. Doubt's a safe place that keeps you non committal, commitment phobic. Commitment is no story, commitment is the result. But not being committed is a story without the result because you're not sure if you can create the result, so you don't commit. And when you're committed, it's it's inevitable. When you're committed, because especially when you're when you're set clearly defined short-term goals, when you live in a place called objectivity and you're realistic, and you're not overwhelmed, and you have clearly defined short-term goals, your habits are improved, success will be inevitable over a period of time, and you're not attached to the length of time because you know that one day, somehow, some way, you will live your dreams, that you will unequivocally live the good life. And the last situation we have here is from learn to stay in power, not force. So power is synonymous with esteem. Esteem means it uplifts, force is resistance. Let go of the resistance that you hold on to. That's the story about outcomes that haven't happened and move into your power and in no state, an aware state. And none of this is how do I, this is an I am situation that you begin to live in one day at a time. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. As I said earlier in the uh, live here, this Saturday, I'll be in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Last Saturday, I was in Jacksonville, Florida with Colleen Olitsky and Susan Dampier. Fabulous event. The weekend before that, I was in Boston, Mass. or in Portsmouth, New Hampshire with Abby O'Neill and her team. So if you would like me to speak at one of your events or you'd like me to come to your city, contact me on Facebook and I will get back to you easily. You can also find me on Instagram and LinkedIn. And every Tuesday at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'll be hosting a Facebook Live, More Heart Than Talent. The call is recorded for podcast the next day and is also available for review on Facebook. Jeffrey Combs, you have a great day.
Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new member's welcome kit and my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today.